everybody. Mike Buck with AK Sled Shed. I want to talk to you today a little bit about uh, riding protocol. And, you know, I've ridden with a lot of guys out there and a lot of riding teams have really good tight riding protocol. And then other people are pretty loose and there's really not any protocol at all going on. So it's something to think about when you go out there in the backcountry. Uh, if you have a good riding protocol with your group, the chances of uh, something really bad happening uh, are, I think, much less. So early season, you know, it's snowing outside. We're starting to get some good snow and we're thinking about getting out there and going riding. Uh, you know, maybe it's a good time to sit down with your group in the evening and, uh, you know, have a beer and watch some, uh, some snow machine videos and talk about the season coming up and decide on your, uh, on maybe some changes to your riding protocol. Uh, some things that are, you know, really common that you should be doing out there and probably everybody does anyway is, uh, you know, at the trailhead, you want to have a good trailhead meeting and uh, you want to make sure everybody's on the same page as far as protocol goes. You always want to have a partner when you're out there. Uh, you want to have a wingman. And determine that at the trailhead. And I'm going to say, hey, Mark, I'm your wingman today. And Mark's going to say back to me, hey, Mike, I'm your wingman today. That way, it kind of gives you a little bit of accountability. And you're really watching out for that person. You're watching out for everybody. But uh, that one person is kind of special because you told him that you're his wingman for the day. Another thing is to make sure that you are responsible for the person behind you. Maybe it's your wingman or maybe it's one of the guys uh, in the other paired up uh, group there. So, you know, if, if something happens back in the pack, you turn around and somebody's missing, well, you know, you stop and go back and that start that chain reaction up the line and everybody is back there helping out at some point. So um, it's always good to look out for the person behind you and, uh, and you can always go back and, and uh, help out. So when you're paired up with somebody, uh, you know, one of you is going to kind of be out in front and you sort of give that person uh, a little more <clears throat> leeway, a little more freedom. Uh, so you're going to be kind of watching out for them and you may switch back and forth during the day and take different positions, but you'll always have that wingman that's right close to you and in, inside of you. So in case they get in a bad spot or get in trouble, you can help them out in a hurry. Another really important thing is communication. You know, it's really great to have a radio so you can talk back and forth with your group. And, uh, you know, if you've, uh, you're partnered up with your, with your buddy there and he decides he's going to make a big climb uh, without stopping and talking to everybody first that you know that's what you should do you should could come together as a group uh, before anybody does any uh, any difficult climbs or any you know crux moves or sometimes we call them spank moves you know if, if the guy messes up I uh, he may get spanked or he may you know turn out small avalanche loose and or something like that so uh, you know sometimes it's a good idea to give people a heads up you get on the radio and say hey Mark's about ready to make a spank move over here on the south face of the slope so everybody heads up <clears throat> so when you're out in the backcountry a lot of times you're making potentially difficult moves or uh, maybe a serious climb on a slope you know, crossing a river, or maybe you're in, on a glacier and you're in a crevassed area. You want to really keep an eye on your partner and on people moving through those areas. So you really should come together, talk about those situations where you've got something serious coming up. You're in a hazard zone and everybody should have eyes on that person and be rescue ready. And obviously in avalanche terrain, uh, riding protocol is one person on the slope at a time, everybody else in a safe zone with eyes on that person being rescue ready. It's also really good before you go into that danger zone 
like I say, that everybody comes together, talks about what's going to happen. You do a radio check with the person that's going into the hazard zone so that if you see something happen, you can alert them with your radio and they can probably hear it, you know, as they're traveling through that zone, you know, if they, if they release a slab or if you see something happening that uh, could be a, a danger to that person, really good idea to have that radio communication going. So try to tighten up your group and have a better riding protocol when you're out there in the backcountry. It's gonna make your group safer and it's gonna make your group react better if there is ever an emergency situation. So uh, it's early season, talk about that with your group, get things figured out, and you'll have a really tight riding team for this season. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, remember to subscribe, like, and share, and comment. Uh, you know, let me know what you know what you guys do to tighten up your riding group to have a better riding protocol. We can share this information with each other and uh, make everybody safer out there in the backcountry. Thanks.